So we're now going to go ahead and look at our, our textbook here. And we're in 1.5. Okay, and I'm going to pick some of these out. We'll do a couple of each type. And we're going to be looking at problems on page 147. And we're going to talk about consecutive integers again and how consecutive integers work. Now, we've talked about these before in previous courses. Remember, when we talked about consecutive integers, Remember, those are back-to-back -back numbers. And so the first number, we called that x. The second number, we added 1 to it. The third number, we added another 1 to it. And then if we had to have a fourth number, well, we added another one, which would be like plus 3. So those are consecutive integers. Now, what about even or odd? Well, even or odd, remember, from intermediate, those have a gap of 2. So our first number is still x. Our second number is x plus 2 in this case, right? because we're, we're adding 2 more each time. The third number would be x plus 4. And the fourth number, if we needed one, would be x plus plus 6. And then you continue the pattern from there. So with consecutive integers, we've talked about these in previous courses. Now, when we talked about consecutive integers and intermediate, what we did there was we looked at sums and differences of consecutive integers. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at products or squares of consecutive integers, and sometimes even even or odd. So we're going to look at some of these, and we may get several answers out for these as well. So we're going to start on page 147, and we're going to look at question 10. And these are actually pretty simple to set up. There's not much to these. I think some of these are going to be easier than, than what we did in 1-2, as far as the setup goes. So we're going to look at, at question 10. Find two consecutive integers whose product is going to be 110. So this is pretty straightforward. We remember product means multiply, right? Now, nothing about even or odd, so the gap on these is going to be plus 1. So what we got is we've got two of them, right? We need two numbers. So we're going to call the first number x, and then the second number is going to be x plus 1. And we want the product. So product means we multiply. So the first number times the second number has got to give us 110. That's, that's what we've got from the actual problem itself. Filling in the pieces, we've got x for the first number, and we've got x plus 1 for the second piece. And now we should kind of know what to do. We always begin by parentheses first, so go ahead and distribute that x through. And that's going to then leave us with x squared plus x equals 110. We're going to either use zero factor or the quadratic formula to solve this. So we're going to have to either way set this equal to zero. And then I always like to start with zero factor. If I can't solve it with zero factor, then I'll move on to the quadratic formula. But let's go ahead and begin with, with zero factor. So no number in front, so we put our one here. And 1 times a negative 110, that's a negative 110. And 110 is negative, so what do we know about the signs? Are they different signs, or are they the same signs? Different signs, okay. And then we look in the middle, and we see that that is positive. So we now know that the larger number is positive, smaller number is negative. And we're going to begin with 10. Why 10? Because 
this has a zero on the end. And we can either start with five or 10. We could try five, but let's go ahead and try 10. Well, if I try 10, what do I get? One ten, well, yeah, 110 divided by 10, I get 11, don't I? And what do we know about 11 minus 10? That's one in the middle. So our two numbers are gonna be positive 11 and negative 10. And on most of these questions, they're going to be very easy to factor. They're not going to be really difficult problems as the factoring goes. So there's not a really lot of complicated numbers. It's just a matter of, of applying what we learned in 1-4. Now we can factor this. Remember, we do not have to use factor by grouping because it has the 1. So now we've got x plus 11. And we've got x minus 10. Set each one to zero, so x plus 11 equals zero. One solution is negative 11. x minus 10 equals zero, so another solution, moving that over, is a positive 10. Right? Okay. Now, when we get our numbers, there's actually going to be four of them. There's going to be two for each one. So let's try to find our two numbers for each set. So our first number is represented by x. So if my first number is negative 11, if I take negative 11 and I add 1 to it, I get negative 10. Now, is that going to work for us? Yes, because when I multiply negative 10 and negative 11, what do I get? When I multiply them together, I get a positive 110. So that works. So there's one set. Now, what if my first number was 10. If my first number was positive 10 and I add 1 to it, what else do I get? Positive 11. Right? So you're actually going to get four numbers that work. Two in each set. Because when I multiply these sets together, I get 110. So be aware of it. In many cases, you're going to get multiple solutions. Unlike the applications we did in 1-1 and 1, 2. You, you got 1. When we solve these out, you may have more than 1. Let's try an, an, an odd one. Um, how about 15? Okay, so we're going to look now at question 15, and this one deals with the squares. And this one's odd. So when we look at question 15, we're looking at the sum of the squares of two consecutive odd integers is going to be 202. I want you to find the integers. So first off, we need to determine the type that we have. These are going to be even. So that means my first one's x, my second one is x plus 1, right? Okay. Now, what are we talking about here? This one, it says the sum of the squares. So that means we take each number and we square it, and we then add them together, and that gives you that 2 of 2. So we're going to square each number and add them together. Now, this may require us to FOIL and do some other other work before you actually solve it. But let's go ahead and plug our numbers in. So number one is x, so that comes down. So that's going to be x squared. The second part is x plus one quantity squared. So that came down there. Now, when we work with these, what's our goal? Our goal is to get rid of all the parentheses, set it to zero, and either use zero factor or the quadratic formula. Most of the time we're going to use zero factor. The only time we really use the quadratic formula is when it says round. So we're going to go ahead and begin by taking that x plus 1 quantity squared. We're going to write it out, and we're going to have to FOIL. And that's going to give us then x squared plus x plus x plus 1 
which is then x squared plus 2x plus 1. Which, which piece? Well, in this one, where you put at the top x squared plus x plus x plus 1. Right, um, right. That came from the first times the first. So x times x is x squared. Yep. And then we do the outside times the outside. Okay, so there's that. And then we've got the inside and inside. And then finally, we've got the last times the last. So we foil all that out. Combine as much as we can. And that gives us the 2x in the middle. Now we're almost finished. We're going to go ahead and combine like terms and set this to zero. So when I combine my x's, I have a 2x squared. I've got a 2x, and I'm going to move this 202 over. So we'll go ahead and move that 202 over, and that gives me then a minus 201. And that now equals zero. Okay, let's make sure we got everything right here. Everything looks correct. We've plugged our numbers in. We're looking at the sum. Okay, we're summing these squares of two consecutive odd integers. Oh wait, we didn't. We made a mistake. My mistake. This should have been a plus two. Why should this have been a plus two up here? Sorry about that. Because I wasn't careful. This should have been a plus two. Why? Because on question 15, what type of integers are these? These are odd, right? And odd, you have to add 2. So let me just fix this real quick. Sorry about that. There's, I noticed it before we got too much further. And so that made that then a 4. I made that a 2x, a 2x. Yep, a 4x there and a 4. Sorry about that. I just noticed it now. It was my mistake before we do anything else. And now when we add them, we get a 2x squared plus 4x, right? And then we're going to move that 202 over. So that's going to make that, then when we move that over, minus 198. Sorry about that mistake there, but that should be a plus 2 there instead of a plus 1. Okay. And here's your new homework packet, Tracy. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Well, we've got it set to zero. When we look at this, first thing we do is we look at all of our numbers, and we see if there's something in common. I've got a 2, a 4, and a minus 198. So what are they all divisible by? All those numbers are going to be divisible by what? 2. So we do that. That way our numbers get smaller. So divide everything by a 2. Then we can rewrite it and factor it out. Now when we divide, that gives you x squared. 4 divided by 2 makes it a 2x, like it should be. Then we've got a minus 198 divided by 2. Okay, so 198, when we divide that by 2, that's a 99. And that equals 0. Much easier, no grouping again. First times the last. That's a minus 99. Okay, what two numbers are we going to use again? Well, if we look at this, what do we notice? I always look at my number here. If it ends in a 0, it's got a 5 or a 10 in it. If it ends in a 5, it's got a 5 in it. When it's double digits like this and they're the same, it's got an 11 in it. So we've got 99, so we know there's an 11 in it. And 99 divided by 11, okay, that's 9. So we know we've got a negative. Larger number is going to be positive, sign in the middle. Smaller number is negative. How about we use a positive 11 and a negative 9? Because those will work. Now the good thing is, and most of these are like this, you're not going to have to do grouping. You're going to be able to jump directly to your factors. And that is then x plus 11, x minus 9. So x plus 11 equals 0. That gives you a negative 11. 
x minus 9 equals 0. So x equals now a positive 9. So we've now solved it. We're going to get two sets of numbers. What are my two sets of numbers going to be? If I start with negative 11, what's my next even number? As I add 2, it's going to be negative 9. And if I use a 9, what's my next number? Positive 11. Now, let's see if that makes sense. All we just kind of look and see if these make sense. Why is this going to work? Well, why are the negatives going to work? What happens when you square a negative number? When you square a negative number, it becomes positive, right? So if I plug these back in and I square them, they should give you 202. Okay, let's check it. So we know when we square these negatives, they become positive. So that's going to be fine. But let's look at 11 squared. And we're going to add 9 squared to it. When I do that, what do I get? It's hard to see, but, but you get that 202. Okay. 11 squared plus 9 squared is 202. Now, why do we have two cases? Because we've got a positive set that works and a negative because when you square a negative number, it becomes then positive. Let's do one more consecutive integer problem. And then we'll move on and look at some other types. And we're going to now look at question 18. Now this one's a difference. And when we talk about the differences, we've got to make sure that we subtract them in the correct order. So we want the difference of two square, uh, 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 two consecutive positive integers that are odd as 32. So what do we know here? We know we have two consecutive odd integers. So that tells me then my gap is 2. So my first number is x. My second number is x plus 2, right? Okay, so make sure we notice that. Why are these plus 2? Because these are what? Odd. Now, when we subtract them, we've got to make sure that we put them in the correct order. We know these are positive, and so which one's going to be the smaller number and the larger number? Well, if I start with x, and I add 2 to it, when I add 2, that's going to make this one bigger. So number 2 is larger Than the first number, right? Because if you look at them, when you add 2 to it, it's going to make it a bigger number. So number 2 is larger than the first number. And when we work with these, we need to make sure that the larger number is going to be subtracted from the smaller number. That way we get the positive result that we need. And we are going to have to square these. So the larger number, you said that was 2, so that's going to be uh, number 2 squared minus the smaller one, which is number 1 squared. And that difference then should be 32. When you work with these, you need to make sure when you subtract them that the larger number always goes first and the smaller one subtracted off. And we know that because when we add 2 to a positive number, it makes it bigger every time. So now we've got it set up. Let's fill it in. The second number is x plus 2. So that's x plus 2, quantity squared. The first number is an x squared. And that's going to give us 32. We now have to FOIL to remove that set of parentheses. So we've got x plus 2, quantity squared. Well, that's x plus 2, x plus 2, okay, and then we FOIL. <clears throat> Just like we've done numerous times before, if it helps, draw the arrows. And so when I FOIL this out, 
I now get x times x is x squared. Outside and outside, that's a 2x. Inside and inside, that's a 2x. And last times last is a 4. And that gives you then x squared plus 4x plus 4. This one is actually easier to solve than the last one. And a lot of times, students try to make this more difficult than what it actually is. So when I look at this question here, and I see what I've got, I notice the x squareds, they can do what? One is positive, one is negative, so these can cancel. Now we are left with 4x plus 4 equals that 32. We are not going to have to set this to 0. Why are we not setting it to 0? We are not setting it to 0 because the fact there are no squares. Right? This is linear. The one we did a moment ago had squares in it. So we had to set it to 0 when we factored. This one, there are no squares. This is linear, so we can directly solve it because it is linear by moving the 4 over. So 4x now equals 28. We'll divide by that 4. And that leaves us then with x equaling now 7, doesn't it? Now, whenever we work these out, the 7 is not our complete answer. We only have one number, though, right? We need to get the R set. So if my first number is 7, what's my second number going to be? My first number is 7. My second number is going to be what? should be 9, right, because we add 2 to it. Now, is this going to work for us? Well, let's see. When we subtract them, what should they do? When we square them and subtract them, they should give us that 32. So 9 squared minus 7 squared, that gives us then a difference of 32. Right? So we know that we did it correctly. So we just simply squared or checked, we subtracted them, and that gives us our 32. Negatives are not going to work, and it specifically tells us that our numbers have to be positive in the question itself. It says they are positive consecutive integers that are odd, so we don't have to work with negatives at all. So that's a little bit about consecutive integer problems. Now we're going to look at some geometric figure problems. And some of these require a little bit of thinking on how to set them up. The next ones are going to be geometric figures. So they're going to be things that have rectangles, squares, triangles in them. They are a little bit more difficult in some cases to set up. And when we check these, we've got to watch out for negative answers. Because when we work with geometric figures, we cannot have a negative length or a width. So let's look at a simpler one to start off with. Um, let's look here at question 23. So this is going to be a pretty easy one to begin with. And we're going to look at a parking lot. So a parking lot has a rectangular area, 40,000 square yards. The length is 200 yards more than twice the width. Find the dimensions of the parking lot. So first, we read it, and we know that we have to work with a rectangle. So let's make our parking lot here. So 
So we're going to work with our parking lot. And what do we know about the length and the width? Well, let's, let's review that okay, from the question itself. The 40,000, we'll come back to that in a moment, but that's your area. But let's focus right now on the length and the width. And it says the length is 200 yards more than twice the width. So the length is going to be 200 plus 2 times the width. And we don't know the width, so we're going to use an x to represent that. And now we can rewrite this as the length being 200 plus 2x and the width is x. And so now we can fill this in. Just like that. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solve this. And we're going to have to work with the area. So what do we know about that area? Well, it gives you the fact that the area is 40,000. So let's go ahead and write that down. So this is going to build our equation. So that area is 40,000. And that area is the length. times the width. Remember that formula? Length times the width, that gives you the area. And now we look at our figure and we can plug our values in. So we've got our length and our width. When you multiply them together, that gives you the area. So we'll use an x for the width. We'll just write the width first since it's smaller. And that length is going to be 200 plus 2x. And that gives you then your 40,000. You're welcome. Okay, now, what do we do from here? Well, obviously we're going to have to get rid of our parentheses. So we distribute this x through. Good thing on this one, we don't have to FOIL, we just distribute it through. So that gives you then 200x. And x times 2x, it makes it a 2x squared. And that equals our 40,000. Now we're going to move that 40,000 over. And when we move that 40,000 over, we need to make sure that we write this in the correct order. So highest power of x goes first, so that's a 2x squared. Then we've got a 200x, and then we've got a minus 40,000. This will factor, and it's going to be a lot easier to factor than it looks. First thing I must do is look at this and see, is there a number that's in common? I've got a 2 a positive 200, and a negative 40,000. What number will go into all of them? They're all divisible by what? Two. Okay. Always do that first. That's going to make your number smaller and easier to deal with. If there's a number in common, divide it out. So now we've got x squared plus 100x. E, uh, sorry, minus 20,000, and that equals 0. So now we distributed through, we combined our like terms together, set it to 0, put it in the correct order, and now we've got a factor. I'm going to show you now how to handle this really large number. So first times the last is going to be a negative 200, or sorry, negative 20,000. And we know that it's negative, so we know 1 is positive, 1 is negative. Larger one's going to be positive. Smaller one's going to be negative. Okay. 
Now, we've got all these zeros here. So let's cover them up in our number and in the middle and see if we can find two numbers that are going to make it work. I need two numbers multiply together to give me two. Subtract from each other to give me one. Well, that's going to be easy. That's two and negative one, right? Now, if we look at the number of zeros and we split this up, we've got four zeros. So we're going to split this up in two and two to make the hundred here. So how about we use a positive 200 and a negative 100. So I split up those zeros. I notice there's four of them, two of them here. So let's cover them up. Look at the main numbers out in front. We found that to be two and negative one. Now we split the zeros up. We got four of them. So two can go with the 200. Two of them can go with the negative 100. Now we've got it. We don't have to do grouping. We can factor directly. So that's x plus 200, x minus 100, and that equals 0 again. So x plus 200 equals 0. So x equals a minus 200. x minus 100 equals 0. So x equals 100. We now have two possible solutions. However, one of these is not a legitimate solution. And the mathematics doesn't know which one it is, right? Because all we did was we solved it. The mathematics doesn't know that this is linked to an application. Well, in the application, this is a rectangle, right? And x, well, x represents that width of the rectangle. Can you have a negative length or width? No. So which one has to go then? The 200 that's negative has to go. I do still need to get both my solutions. So we've got 100. Now what does 100 go with? The 100 goes with the width. So that's 100 and it's square yards. So when we talk about a length or a width, it's the base unit. So that means my width is 100 yards. So there's one of them. Now what about the length? If we go back up and we look, what is the length? The length is 200 plus 2x. So then my length is going to be 2 times 100 right, plus that another 200. And that gives us then a length of 400 yards. So we've got 100 yards for that parking lot for the width and 400 yards for the length. And that was one of the easier ones, yes. Now you see why I split that first chapter up in half. Because there's so much to it, the, the first chapter is going to take more time than any of the others. I thought 1, 2 was hard. Um, well, well these, these are 1, 2, but then in 1, 2, the equations were easier to solve. These are, are sometimes harder to set up, but then you also have a difficult equation to solve as well. But this is the only section of applications. So once we get through this one, it'll be a little bit easier. Sure. Well, when we get, we'll be solving <laughs> equations that are a little bit more complicated to solve, but no more applications. Okay. okay. Um, how about we look at question 27? And we're going to look at question 27. If I want to make a box, three-dimensional box, 
from a piece of cardboard, right? I can fold it up and I can make a box, right? But it came from a flat sheet of cardboard. And we've got the flaps that fold up and they create a box. Now, when we look at question 27, we're going to be creating a box like this from a, a flat sheet of metal. So this is our goal, to take a flat piece here, because we've got flaps, we're going to have to cut out two, fold it up, and make this. A rectangular sheet of metal is 10 inches longer than it is wide. Squares with sides 2 inches long are cut from the four corners. And the flaps are folded upward to form an open box like this. Well, I mean, ours has a top, but the one we're going to look at has no top. But it's going to be folded up. The volume of the box is 832 cubic inches. What were the original dimensions of this piece of metal? So we wanted to find the original dimensions. So first off, we're going to start with our piece of metal. And it's a rectangle. And it says for this rectangle, it says the rectangular piece of metal is 10 inches longer than it is wide. So I'm just going to go ahead and call that width x. And the length x plus 10. Is everyone okay with that? So that's that's the start of it. We drew our figure. We know it's a rectangle. We labeled it. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to be cutting out squares from the edges, just like this. So these squares are going to be cut out. And then we're going to be folding it. And we're going to fold it up, and it's going to make a box. Because, it, because these flaps here are like, like this flap here. Okay, It's going to be folded up. So these are going to fold here at our dotted lines. I'm going to make some dotted lines. And if I fold it at the dotted lines, it's going to give us a box, just like this. So there's our box. Now, when we go to dimension this and create this box, the squares are two inches that we're taking out. So we're cutting out these pieces of material that are two by twos. And let's try to redimension this back out again and figure out what the lengths of these flaps are. So let's start here. And we're going to have to dimension it and eventually get to this that we can dimension. Now if I look at this piece here, where I've got labeled, right here, Originally, it was x plus 10, wasn't it? And how much is gone? 2 from each piece, right? So it's actually x plus 10 minus 2 and another minus 2, which then that makes it x plus 6 there. Because there's 2 inch squares are cut from the corners. So this piece is now x plus 6. What about this little flap here? What about it? Well, originally it was x, right? But how much is gone? This whole side is x. How much is gone? 2 and another 2. So it's actually x minus 1. 
4. Now we can dimension, because if we fold this all up again, we can now dimension our rectangular solid here. So, let me try to color code these the best that I can. When we look here, we're going to see how things go together. So this piece, this x minus 4, that's going to go right here. Because that piece, when I fold it up, is going to go there. Because that this piece right here links up with this. Now what about the long side here, this, this length here? But this piece is going to link back to the x plus 6. And when I fold it up, if you think about folding it up, okay, think about it like this, this flap. This flap has got to be folded up, okay, so it's got to be folded up. How much did we take out? We took out 2 on each side, so we fold it up. This is 2, and that's going to make our height 2. I know the green doesn't show up. It looks almost like black, but that's supposed to be green there, and that matches up with that green one. And then the blue matches up with the blue, and that height represents how much we took out. Now we need to go back to our problem and work with the last piece that we haven't worked with yet, which that's the volume. And we know the volume is 832, so 832 cubic inches. And whenever we look at a rectangular solid, you can go to the back cover of your textbook, or you can just know that volume is three things multiplied together. The area was two, length times width. Volume is three. So the volume is going to be the length times the width times the height. And we'll take a break after this question and come back and do some more of them. And we can put these in any order, but that just basically means what? That just basically means we take all of these and multiply them together. So that's 2 times x minus 4, x plus 6, and that equals 8, 32. Now let's try to make this as easy as we possibly can here. On the left hand side you're going to notice there's a 2 factored out. And on the right hand side we've got 832 which is an even number. So I can make my life a little bit easier by simply dividing both sides by 2. And that'll take that 2 out and then 832 is also divisible by 2. So whenever you see something in front and it goes with the other side, get rid of it. So 832, we're going to divide that by 2, and that then comes out to be 416. And now we've got x minus 4 and x plus 6. And I know these problems are, are Sometimes difficult to go through because it's the setup plus it's actually solving them. Now, it's not set to zero. Before we set it to zero, though, we have to work with this. We have to take that x minus 4 and the x plus 6, and we're going to have to FOIL it out because it's not set to zero. If it was set to zero, we would be done, but it's not. So we have to FOIL and then refactor. So let's take our x minus 4, x plus 6, and we're going to FOIL.
if you need to, draw your arrows here. Because we're just simply going to FOIL. And we've got x times x. Well, that makes it an x squared. Outside and outside, that's a positive 6x, a negative 4x. And negative 4 times 6, well, that's a minus 24. Combining, that is x squared. And you've got a plus 2x minus 24. And that equals the 416. We are now making good progress. We've got one step left, and then we'll be able to finish this problem out. So what do we now need to do? We should know what to do here. This has to be set equal to what? Zero. Zero. So move that 416 over. And that leaves you with an x squared, a plus 2x, a minus 440, and that equals zero. This will factor out nicely. There's a 1. So we take a 1 times that negative 440. We've got this negative 440 here. We know it's negative. Large number in the middle is positive. So that means 1 is positive. 1 is negative. And 440 ends in a 0. So let's try 10. 440 divided by 10. That's 10 and 44. Does that give you a difference of 2? No. Nope. So let's go up. How about 440? Divide that by 20. That works because that's 22 and 20. And when we subtract 22 and 20, we get a difference of 2. So we will use a 22 that's positive and a 20 that is negative. Going back now, we've got x plus 22 x minus 20 equals 0. So x plus 22 equals 0. So x equals a negative 22. Now, is that going to be a possible solution, yes or no? Yes. No. Why not? Because it is negative, and in this case, we're looking at lengths and widths, and we cannot have a negative solution. So that piece is automatically gone. What about the other one? x minus 20 equals 0. So x equals then a positive 20. Can that one be a solution? Yes, it can be. Now, what does the question specifically want? This question specifically wants the dimensions of the original piece of metal. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at the original piece of metal from the very beginning. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at the original sheet of metal that we started with before we took the pieces out. So the original sheet of metal was this. And this, this will be it. We're almost done with this one. The original sheet of metal was x by x plus 10. Now, we know that x is 20. So that means your width is going to be 20. And this metal is measured in inches. How I know that is it's in cubic inches, right? And the sides are 2 inches long that are cut out. So my original is going to have a width then of 20 inches. We need to also find the length. The length is going to be 20 plus 10, which is then 30 inches. So there is your length and your width. We're now going to take a short break. We're going to come back, and we're going to do some more of these.
And we're going to spend a lot of time in this section because these are difficult questions. And I want to make sure we have the skills that we need to do your homework. Let's take a short break.